Well, the politicians simply can't stop talking, can they? Between the Labour parties, Peter B and Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed on the one hand and the Bola Tinubu presidency on the other, there's been yet another heated exchange over the 2023 presidential election result and where the truth lies. And it's all happening amid the controversy of the president's first supplementary budget, not just because of the speed with which the National Assembly passed it, but because many of the things it seeks funding for are coming at a time when the government is asking Nigerians to persevere through the pain caused by a raft of reforms introduced by the president. There was $6 million for a presidential yacht, $36 million for Asso Rock expenses, including the purchase of luxury vehicles for the office of the First Lady, and $15 million to be spent on the presidential air fleet. To be fair, there are also urgent issues in that budget, including defense and security, money to repair bridges, cash transfers to vulnerable households, additional pay for federal workers, and road construction and maintenance. But against the backdrop of worsening hardships for most Nigerians, can some of the expenditure be justified? Absolutely not, say Peter B and his running mate Yusuf Dati Baba Ahmed, both of them still clearly smarting from that Supreme Court affirmation of Bola Tinubu as president of Nigeria. This judgment amounts to a breach of confidence of Nigerians have in our judiciary. To that extent, it is a show of unreasonable force against the very Nigerian people from whom the power of the Constitution drives. INEC displayed incompetence in the conduct of its statutory duties. The judiciary has largely acted in defiance of the Constitutional tenants, presidents, and established ground rules. The petition court and the Supreme Court please quote me on this, did not actually affirm the success of Tinimbu's presidency. They upheld the unconstitutionality of that election. And they are happy for it to remain so. And they have the power. Nobody can do anything about it. That is why we said it is an unreasonable show of force. If there was something we could do, we would stop it. But we are law-abiding citizens. That is why I'm here sitting with you today and still complaining. Mm. I was not shaken one bit. I will never be shaken by certificate forgery, by uh, forfeited money over narcotics. I will never be shaken by IREV switched off in the middle of the game when they saw us winning. Labour Party won 2023 presidential elections. Rather combative Yusuf Baba Ahmed on this program uh, yesterday and before him Mr. Peter B. And we did offer a right of reply to the uh, APC and to the presidency. They're yet to take it up but that offer is still there. For more on this I'm joined now in the studio by the political analyst and executive director of Development Specs Academy Professor Oke Ikechuku who's a member of the editorial board of this day newspaper and is also a professor of strategic management and human capital development. And he's got a hat on, which means that, <laughs> <laughs> but he actually needs several hats you because I, I just, I mean, you've done so much. <laughs> it's a pleasure to see you again. Same here. Same here. I think it was Daniel Buala who was quoted as saying that, uh, Daniel Buala, spokesman mm -hmm. for the uh, PDP, mm -hmm as saying that President Tinubu will face bigger problems managing obedience than Nigeria's economy. <laughs> what do you reckon? <laughs> well, <clears throat> managing obedience. Obedience has a point of view on the elections, on the presidency, on the election outcomes. What channels are open to them, the media, and all of that. So if I'm in Tinubu's position, I'm not quite sure there's much to manage. If they misbehave, they get arrested, and they have not a reputation. They have no reputation for misbehaving. If you say they could be irritating in the kind of comments they will make, that might be a valid point. 
But I do not suppose that that's something for which the presidency will have to carve out um, an empire or a brigade to take care of. So I don't see much strength in that comment. I, I would rather look at it from the perspective of the comments of the contestants. I think a few things are clear and we need to keep repositioning them. If you accept the rules of a game, you take the outcome. If a game is about to start and there's a referee and you allow the referee to um, carry out the job, chances are that you're bound to take the result. But you can protest. Though. Certainly. Mm. And when you protest, there's a review. After the review, your channels for protest are gone. Um, you may not like the result of the review, which is what we are seeing now. And so one can understand that. But I would like to also add this. With the judgment of the Supreme Court, there's no other option. In other words, there's no further recourse for anybody. And I believe that Nigeria must be in existence before you oppose the government governing it. Everybody, APC, Labour, PDP, even parties that are yet to form, all of us are suffering grievous economic harm from the angle of the fuel subsidy, the value of the national currency and all of that. And so there's a worry about survival. But let's also put some perspective. Mm. So, but clearly, I mean, you, the, the presidency has actually replied, but they replied on the pages of newspapers <laughs> rather than on, on television okay. or whatever. I mean, they, they've, um, um, they, they've reacted rather angrily to questions about the legitimacy of the Tinubu presidency. Um, they see it as an attack on the very basis of President Tinubu's claim to the presidency, which is that Supreme Court judgments Judgment. that affirmed his, his presidency. So a war of words, a war of words, and perhaps an indication of how fraught relations are going to be between the two sides going forward. I agree, but you see, like I say, mm. broader perspective. Now, um, concerns are uh, still being expressed about how we're going to look in the, before the international community. The Nigerians are robbed. Even I agree. But which international community? The international community that speaks of transparency, uh, good governance, among other things. Mm. That international community sat and watched what happened, isn't it? They, are still, they still have relations with Nigeria. Then the whole gamut or gang up of the fight, Nigeria has elder statesmen, many of whom are presumed to have international clout, many of whom are against the outcome of the Supreme Court. And the question is, how come the entire array of nationally powerful individuals, internationally powerful individuals, the international community that is committed to the best ideals, all of them have watched this happen, and our country must exist. So if I am one of those affected, no matter how angry I am, I'll start preparing for the next election. Hmm. And that means, for instance, a party like the Labour Party needs to be built into a party. I think some energy, I believe some energy should go into that. I believe also that we should look at ourselves as a people and admit our collective failure. Is there no man who had once been president, whom a court of competent jurisdiction said no, it was illegitimate, but who until he passed, always attended the Council of States meeting as a former head of state? Are we not a nation living on forged identity in so many respects? And wherever you look at it, you say it's a, we are isolating individuals, whereas it's a national malay. That is a more worrisome thing because the pretense and the presumption, presumptive uh, claim that this thing can be isolated overlooks the fact that nearly all the institutions of state, nearly all the respectable people are masquerading false identities. And this is a more fundamental mm. national crisis than we're making it look like. The international community is also masquerading a false identity as promoter of democracy and transparency so there's cause for reflection. Mm. But some kind of agitated um, engagement, that's not what I would recommend. Consistent claim that, oh, we don't want it. It's all right. You have a reason to feel that way. But right now, frankly, if anybody has a solution to our problems, and that person is not in a position to apply that solution, 
We are driving to uh, Lokoja. I have a tank. Uh, you're driving. I have a gallon of fuel. The vehicle is running out of fuel. All of us want to get to Lokoja, put that fuel in the car. We are suffering right now, and we need a way around right. it. Right. Well, certainly, Mr. B made some constructive suggestions yesterday. He was advocating a five-year rotational presidency. Some have said it should be six years. Um, I wonder what you make of that and whether they can use um, their representation, for instance, in the National Assembly and perhaps form a, an alliance with the other that. political parties to drive that sort of thing. I mean, Yusuf Baba Ahmed, who was on this program yesterday, took a rather more radical position. I wonder what your thoughts are on that. No, first of all, it's a good suggestion. Mm. It cannot be, um, what do you call, a Labour Party matter. That had come up, I think, under Jonathan and some mm. other previous governments. So it's a good idea. But beyond that, these are the three things I think we should look at. A lot of people were not happy that Tinubu was sworn in before the Supreme Court judgment. Whether they're happy or not, the law said so. Mm. So you can't suspend the law. So what they will work on towards the next election if so, there be a constitutional provision that all litigation ends before swearing in. In other words, those things are more manageable and, and easier to get done yes. than, for example, a six-year rotation. Yes, you can't president. say don't do when the law yeah. says you can do. So that's mm. one. If you now get it into the constitution, it will make sense to say don't swear somebody in. Secondly, if you mark out a six-year or five-year rotational presidency, mm. it takes out the issue of second term. It compels every person to walk within what is feasible, and we have a history of that having been done. Jack Conde was governor in Lagos State. Everything he did in four years, a lot of governors have not done in 12 years today, and things are more facile and easier today. So it is. it would be a good thing to do. Mm. Yes, uh, it would make a lot of sense to me. So do, do you see them being an effective opposition? I mean, can they marshal the other opposition members in, in the National Assembly to force through reforms? I mean, as you said, they could potentially do something if they work together, couldn't they? No, no, no. Their numbers are not enough, and right. I fear there's very little cohesion or sophistication. As a matter of fact, without prejudice to the fact that the, the, those who are in the National Assembly really managed to get there, nobody, I, I mean, I can't speak mm. for everybody, I don't, I don't see the Labour Party, I can't smell the Labour Party, they've all taken their SUVs, I'm not sure they've been associated with any radical point of view on any matter, including the weather. So if they are there, it is a suspicion or rumour. Mm. But as to say that their presence is felt, no, I don't see it. To speak of them mobilizing a point of view is quite possible, but that could not be on their own. So what the challenge Labour faces is that of actually defining an identity to theirs, meaningful opposition. It's not happening. That's why I mentioned earlier, rebuild your party. Let's know what you stand for. Mm -hmm. Peter Obi is not Labour Party. Peter has a fantastic profile. You leverage on it and nearly got the presidency. Could you please now set up proper party offices? So that if there's another election, you have party representatives who will be in the booth. Could you tell us what your party represents? Could you follow advice I've repeated so many times in the last 10, 15 years? That parties ought to hold in each state quarterly rallies. That makes them parties. That makes the members meet each other. That makes the party chairman across. So they build membership and not just during elections. Mm. So can we see politics being done differently? And perhaps a shadow cabinet. Uh, what do you call it? Project number one. Mm. So that for any policy you think is not good enough, you mm. tell us what you think, etc. So all this, you can get to an, as angry as you want to be in the media, but Nigerians to s want to see the alternative ideology, the alternative perspective, the alternative um, Nigeria you're mm. trying to offer. So we're angry about the process, no question about that. The outcome is there. You can't do anything about it. But could you, in addition to preparing uh, for the future, you know, just get serious, do yeah. something we can point to. Anybody that's, that's, can get that's, angry. That's very solid advice. And yeah. um, as you pointed out, um, with, you know, Peter B was in, in that speech yesterday condemning um, the purchase of SUVs and so on at, nation, at the National Assembly and, 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 and in the supplementary budget. But as you said, I mean, lawmakers from his party endorsed it and collected their own SUVs. But that sort of allows us to segue into that supplementary budget. Mm -hmm.
But even before that, the mm. SUV is one. The palliatives, I think 70 billion mm. to members of the National Assembly, by somebody's calculation, which I can confirm, understand it translates into 149 per person, million. Now, I'm representing my people, and the palliatives for the state is 5 million for the state, and it hasn't come. Imagine that I got 149 million and I went home to my people and said, listen, my, my constituency, this is what I've been given as your representative. I'm thinking of making 100 million available to the constituency to determine how it will go around. I'll keep 47 because it's my, it's, it's my phone I used to call you. I have more expenses because of this job. Just imagine the effect that will have had on Nigerians. Mm. And so you also find that when you speak of fake identities, forged purposes, representatives who only on, they, they've collected SUV, they've collected um, the one that they said don't mention it, and then the 149. When do the people come into their thoughts in that place and in the things they do? Mm. So irresponsibility, when we keep picking on the presidents, we overlook the fact that those who are in touch with the people who need to make explanations are not anywhere in Abuja. Yeah, that's... Uh that, that makes sense. And um, just looking at that supplementary budget, which is another example to mm, some people. Yeah, that's true. Um, it's extraordinary, isn't it, that the country can barely raise revenue of about 8 trillion naira in a national budget of more than 22 trillion, and it has to borrow the rest um, in a country with over 200 million people, most of whom can be productive taxpayers. Mm, but they are not. Um, <laughs> Are you alarmed by, for example, the debt service to revenue gap, the fact that Nigeria seems to be plunging into the jaws of a debt trap and appears to steadily be staring bankruptcy in the face? Well, I think it's more like hugging bankruptcy. The face is now too close to be seen. So is it well, they're kissing. Yeah, actually, that's it. I've done the verge of that. But look at it like this. There's nothing wrong with borrowing. You borrow 200 billion, you put into a project that creates jobs that will give you 900 billion, why mm. shouldn't you borrow? But like you come to my village, you borrow a lot of money, you buy more yams, you expand your farms, the next um, harvesting season you're selling more yams than everybody. Mm. Borrowing should go on. But I come in the same village, I borrow money to take a chieftaincy title. I use the balance to marry two more wives. Now I'm creating mouths for which I will borrow money to feed. That's what is wrong. Yeah. That's what we're doing. That's we're doing point. a lot of consumption. And the issue is this. There are expenses that are unavoidable. There are expenses that are discretionary. All the items, I mean, quite a number of the items on that list mm. are dispensable, discretionary, and avoidable. Because if you don't buy a yacht, if you don't buy so many other things, Nigeria won't fall apart. If you don't spend X number of billions uh, re renovating the presidential villa. So you see that, first, it didn't have to happen right away. Secondly, it's also happening at a time when people were thinking that, look, we're mm. barely alive. <coughs> now, there's been the explanation, particularly with regard to the yacht, that, look, it's not this government, um, and government is a continuity. You can't just dis, uh, disown our obligations. I agree completely that government is a continuity, but with this caveat. Yes, as a responsible government, we can deny Nigeria's indebtedness, mm. but having procured it from the man I took over from, I'm of the view that it does not serve any immediate and will not serve any immediate national need and so I've directed I'd also be put back in the market. The plus Nigerians would have given for that is a different matter. Absolutely. Now, that's opportunity missed. The other thing, of course, is if you look at several other things on that list, my concern is not just that they're on that list, but why would I allow this to be happening to my boss? That's the part I don't understand. Um, how do people feel putting this together, coming into the public domain? Defending it is one thing justifying it is another. And most of the defenses, it could be reflexive, oh, we know what we are doing and all of that, but the optics are bad. And concern is about the optics. 
On that note, I will say thank you very much indeed. Uh, we would have liked to have much more time with you, but we've got to try and manage that rather well today. Professor Okei Kejibu is a political analyst, executive director of Development Specs Academy, a member of the editorial board of This Day newspaper, and a professor of strategic management and human capital development. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.